Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to go over one of the more straightforward but still important aspects of composition, and that's called visual tangents. So here if you look at this drawing of a cup I've made, sitting inside my picture plane, it is sort of nicely sitting in the center. Well, if I were to put it directly touching the bottom of this frame, all of a sudden it becomes uncomfortable. What's happened is the lines are touching, and all of a sudden you're very aware of the frame. When it was up here, the frame is just the edge of the image. Well, when my subject is so closely touching the frame, the frame becomes activated, and the viewer is unable to ignore it. So that's bad. You're flattening the image and causing a visual tangent between the saucer and the frame. And that would happen if I did it at the top, or any of the edges, you do not want this. This just feels bad from a strictly visual sense. This is always a no-no. Well, this is not strictly limited to the subject and frame. Instead, it could be the individual pieces of your subject itself. So let's take this handle. I've added it on its own layer so I can position it wherever I want. If I were to position it right here, this would be a problem. You can see where that intersects it's causing a visual tangent. Once again, it's uncomfortable. In this case, it flattens the perspective and it makes it sort of spatially confusing. Well, the fix is really easy. I could have just chosen to move this ever so slightly lower. Now that there's overlap, the space is less visually confusing. Alternatively, I could have moved it slightly above and that would have been fine too. That tiny bit of white space separating those two objects makes all the difference. Another thing to watch out for are the corners of your composition. So here I'll add in a knife on the second layer here, and I can put this wherever I want. Now if I were to put it right here, that would be bad. That would be a visual tangent, because here I have the top edge of the knife drawing a diagonal line directly back to the corner. And once again, this makes my picture plane very noticeable. As the viewer, I can't help but notice that there is a corner in this image. Now if I moved it just a little bit off like that, it becomes fine. Now it's running off the page, not causing any problems. This has no tangents. This does. That does. And again, with object to object, if I were to put it right here, that would be bad too. I would either want to put it directly underneath or to give it a little breathing room. Either one's okay. So if you were drawing a still life and you saw that two objects from your viewpoint happen to be touching exactly like that, this is when you want to shift your viewpoint a little bit. Because sure, you could say, no, it was, it was exactly like that. I drew it perfectly realistically, but it would still create a visual problem. So instead, if you were to either rearrange the scene physically or to move your viewpoint, so that there weren't any visual tangents, your drawing is just gonna look better. But a lot of the times, what you're gonna be doing is drawing from your imagination. So every line you place on the canvas is up to you. So it's important to not accidentally make any of these visual tangents because they really flatten your image. And here in these dragons I painted, you can see that I'm taking careful consideration of tangents in a finished work. So there are little intersections here where it was very close to being a tangent. In fact, in my original sketch, it may have been. But I made sure to give just a little bit of overlap or a little bit of white space around each of these intersections to make sure that I'm not having tangents that'll flatten my image. So look back over your old pieces and see, is this something you were accidentally doing without knowing it? It's easy to fix and worthwhile doing. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.